Welcome to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosy UK. Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet this super cute tiny teapot that you can turn into a little keychain. Before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell so that you never miss out on another one of my free crochet tutorials again. Let's gather the materials we need to make our teeny tiny teapot. For the cotton itself, I'm going to be using Paintbox Yarns Cotton DK, which is a size 3 cotton and does recommend a 4mm crochet hook. But for today, we're going to be using a 3.5mm crochet hook. The smaller the hook, I'm more likely to use a soft grip because for some reason I get a little bit tense when I'm working with tiny stitches. Now you can make this in as many colours as you want. So this teapot was of course in three different colours. I'm going to do this one slightly different for you and stick to one colour for the main body and then match the colour of the spout, the base and the handle in an alternative colour. So I think I'm going to do pink and purple so we don't need this misty grey. So the colours that I'm going to be using are tea rose and candy floss pink. So these, this is my favourite um, cotton to use for um, any kind of teeny tiny project like amigurumi or something like that. So on top of your yarn and your hook, you are of course going to need a little chain and of course a key ring finding. I think that's the right phrase for that. Pop that over there. A pair of scissors, a darning needle, and a very, very small amount of fibre fill or stuffing. So gather all those materials and let's get started. So now that we've gathered all of our materials with our main colour, whichever colour you choose, we're going to start by making the body of the teapots. So the first thing we're going to do is to make a magic circle. So if you have a way that you like to do that, do it in your normal way. I'll link below my tutorial on how to do a magic knot. It's one of those things you do need to practice. If you don't want to do a magic knot, you can do a chain two and work into that first chain. Or of course, you can do a chain four and create a ring. So for the first round, we're going to start by doing a chain one. And then working into the centre, this chain one does not count as a stitch, we're going to work into the centre of this magic ring and work six double crochets, two, oops, three, four, five, and six. Gonna straighten those all up. There we are. Untangle my tail yarn here. There we go. Sorry, I've got the light on my camera. There we go. So we just pull on the tail yarn to bring that loop in. And then to join the round, we're going to slip stitch into not this stitch here because that's our chain one we're going to slip stitch into this stitch so if you're ever unsure do count your stitches so we've got one two three four five and six so that one doesn't count we're going to slip stitch by inserting our hook into both loops of that first stitch that we made i'm just going to tighten my loop a little bit and then we're going to pull through and straight through that loop on our hook to join that round so for round one, we simply work six single crochets in US terms into that magic circle. Going into round two, we start by making a chain one and then working into the same stitch that we've just slip stitched into, we're going to work two single crochets into each stitch around. We just insert the hook, yarn over, bring a loop up and pull through two. And we do that twice in each stitch. So that's the first stitch. And then we go into the next stitch and work another two single crochets. And continue that around. So this is going to double our stitch count from 6 to 12. We 
working two single crochets into each stitch. With my last stitch here. So you can see that we've almost got another stitch here, but that's not actually a stitch. That is simply where we joined our previous round. So we need to ignore that one. If you're unsure, as always, I would say to check your stitch count. That doesn't look like a stitch. <laughs> Two, four, six, eight, ten. No, we've got 12. See how confusing that is? That is not a stitch there. This is our first stitch of our round. So we've got our slip stitch here, there's our chain one, and this is where we want to insert our hook to join the round. So we just go under again, both loops of, with our hook. I'm going to push mine on, sorry, there we go. Making sure we've got both those loops, and then slip stitch to join, and that joins round two. So we should have a total of 12 stitches now. Going into round three, we're going to chain one. And this time for this round, we're going to work one single crochet into the first stitch and two single crochets into the next. And that's gonna increase our stitch count in every other stitch around, taking it from 12 to 18. So we insert the hook that we've just, uh, into the stitch that we've just slip stitched into. We're going to place one single crochet into that stitch. Then working into the next stitch, we're going to work two. One and two. So in the next stitch, we do one, one single crochet. Then in the next stitch along, we work two single crochets. That's one. Oh, goodness me, sorry. One and two. one single crochet and then into the next stitch we do two and we repeat that the whole way around so that we increase our stitch count to 18. So one single, two singles. So keep on going around placing one and then two and I'll see you at the end of round three. So I've reached that last stitch in round three. And of course, I would recommend doing a stitch count. So from here we have... So we've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, and eighteen. Perfect. Again, at the end of round three, we're going to ignore our slip stitch and our chain one, and we're gonna slip stitch into that top of the first stitch that we made by inserting our hook and pulling through to complete round three. So round four is going to be our last our last round to increase. So I've done my chain one, and in this round, we're going to work one single crochet, one single crochet, and then increase all the way around. So we insert our hook, work one single crochet into the next hook, two single, uh, one single crochet, and then into the third stitch, we're going to work two single crochets. So that's one, and two. And we're going to repeat that the whole way round for round four. So we do one, one again, and then we do two into the next one. So we increase into that third stitch in this pattern. And we're going to repeat that the whole way round. So continue around working one single crochet, one single crochet, and then increasing all the way around. And I will catch up with you at the end of round four.
So at the end of round four, we should have a total of 24 stitches. So ignoring our slip stitch in our chain one, we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22 and four. Phew. So as always, we're going to slip stitch to join into the top of that first stitch of the round. And then for rounds five, all the way up to round eight. So five, six, seven, eight. So we're gonna do four rounds, just working into every stitch around. So for round five, we, we chain one, which I've already done, sorry. And then we're going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. So no more increases. So work all the way around for round five. When you get back, as always, just slip stitch to the top of your first stitch and repeat this for round six and seven and eight. So when we come back, we will all have a total of eight rows completed and we should still have a stitch count of 24, but we'll have the bulk of our teapot completely done. So this is round five. You're gonna repeat this for rounds five, six, seven and eight. So four rounds working one single crochet into each stitch around and I'll meet you back at the end of round eight. So I've just reached the end of round eight and as always I'm just going to slip stitch to join into that first stitch. And so far we have more of a cup than we do a teapot. So from now on, I'm just gonna snip this end a little bit, just so it can get in my way. In case you're ever wondering, if your tail yarn is hanging out the bottom and your stitches look like this, that's considered the wrong side. And the right side is where you can see your slip stitch join. Obviously some amigurumi patterns work in the spiral, but we're not today, we're doing our chains. So for round nine, we're going to be using a technique called the invisible decrease, uh, which is literally as it says on the tin. It is an invisible decrease. Sometimes you'll see when you're decreasing your single crochets, that it leaves a bit of a hole and you want to avoid that because we don't want the stuffing coming back out. So for instance, when you look at the bottom of this row here where I've decreased, you can't really see where those decreases are. And that's what we want when we're making this one as well. So we've done our chain one. And we're going to reverse the way that we did our decreases. So for round nine, we're going to work one single crochet into the same stitch that we've chained into. We're going to work a second. And then over the next two stitches, we're going to work the invisible decrease. So with the invisible decrease, you insert your hook into the front loop of the first stitch and then into the front loop of the second stitch. So you've got what looked like three loops on your hook. We're going to yarn over, bring our loop through both those first two loops and then complete our decrease stitch. So you can see it's left the other half of the stitch behind but it hasn't created a big hole. So we've worked into this stitch here and see where you've got your stitch coming out of it. So the next stitch we need to work into is actually this one. So we do a single crochet, a single crochet into the next stitch. And then over the next two stitches, we're going to do that invisible decrease again. So we insert our hook, picking up just that front loop and then pick up the front loop of the next stitch as well. Then we yarn over and pull through those two front loops to leave two loops on our hook before yarning over pulling through to complete that decrease. There's our next stitch to be worked. We've already decreased into that one. So we're going to do a single crochet. <coughs> single crochet into the next stitch. And then we work our invisible decrease across the next two stitches. So we just try and pick up just that front loop
So the front loop and the other front loop. We're going to yarn over and pull through those two front loops and yarn over and pull through two. Don't worry, we're going to get to do this quite a lot over the next round. So we single crochet into the next two stitches. And then we're going to decrease over these two stitches. So we're just going to pick up that front loop. She says, there we go. And that next front loop, we're going to yarn over and pull through those two front loops before we yarn over and pull through both. That's our next stitch to work into. So we're going to work two single crochets, one into one stitch, one into the next, and then we're going to invisible decrease over the next two stitches. So front loop, front loop, pull through, pull through two. Then we're going to work two further single, oops, two single crochets into the one single crochet into the next two stitches before we finish working an invisible decrease on those last two stitches. And as always, we're going to slip stitch, ignoring that slip stitch there. We're going to slip stitch to join into the top of that first stitch. And that completes our first decrease. See how that's starting to curve in? So for the next round, we're going to decrease again. So for round 10, we're going to chain one. And on this round, we're going to work one single crochet and then decrease across the next. So just one single crochet into that same stitch that you've worked your chain one in. And then over the next two stitches, just going to pick up those front loops. Yarn over, pull through those two front loops. Yarn over, pull through two. So repeat that the whole way round. We're going to work one single crochet and then decrease across the next two stitches. Single crochet and then decrease. would have been a slip stitch. We don't want that. So that's my last decrease in this round. Now before I slip stitch to join, I'm going to stuff my teapot. You'll be surprised how much you'll get in there. Just bring up a loop and leave that out of the way. And then fill your teapot quite firmly with stuffing. If we leave it any longer, it's going to be hard work getting that stuffing in there. So we're going to try and pack it in. See how much that takes already? Try and squish a little bit more of these clouds in. I always think they look like clouds. Just push it in, be quite firm with it. We want a nice firm teapot. There we go. Be surprised how much you can get in there. There we go. We can always shove a little bit more in at the end before we finish sealing this up. So at the end of round 10, we should have decreased our stitches all the way back down to 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve on my hook, which is spun. Hang on. There we go. So, as always, to finish this round, we're going to slip stitch to the top of our first stitch, which is now turning in because of the decreasing. Let me just shove my hook through there. 
There we go. Try not to pick up any stuffing. I have, there we go. And just slip stitch to join. You can always tighten your slip stitches. There we go. And chain one for the start of round and the final round at that. So this round, I think you're going to guess what I'm going to tell you to do. We're going to decrease every single stitch around. So now that we've chained one, we're going to pick up just the front loops of the next two stitches. It's a little bit harder after you've done your slip stitch. And that's one and two and decrease across each stitch because we're going to half this stitch count. Try not to pick up too much of the stuffing strands at the same time. This is the last one. If it's getting a bit fiddly, it's worth it because it gives us that really great finish. There we go. So we're going to slip stitch to join and then we're just going to use our needle just to weave in and close that final hole. I'm going to do a little chain one, leave a small amount of yarn and snip. Use your hook to pull that thread through. If you want to squish some more stuffing in, you can. Mine's pretty firm, so I'm quite happy with that. But what I am going to do, just before I do anything else, is I am going to just cinch closed this hole. And to do that, I'm simply going to weave through the front loops, so the loops closest to me, of the last round, in and out, all the way around. And then when I pull, it would just close that hole very, very neatly. And then I can do a little knot through one of these stitches just to secure. It's like there is no start. Well, there is, because there's the start. So to hide these ends, this is a bit that everyone gets freaked out about when they first make anything small like this. We're simply just going to place our hook through, all the way through, push, push, push and come out of another stitch. Try not to catch the stuffing as you're doing it and pull your hook all the way through. Go right back into where you've just come out of and come out the other side. Do that a few times. And what's happening is your thread is getting caught up in your stuffing so it will never be seen again. See, I'm pushing my stuffing through. We don't really want to do that. So let's wiggle that through. There we go. So once you've done that a few times and you're happy, you can just gently push your scissors up against your work without cutting your work, Fiona, and snip. And even if it's poking through a little bit, just go boop and it disappears. Give it a squish and it will disappear. So this is the first part of our teapot all finished. So if you want to grab your second colour, we're going to add on the stand. It does make your circle stand. So grab your other colour and we'll get that started onto our next teapot. Now that we've finished the body of our teapot, we're going to make this little skirt. So as you can see, it's reattached. So we're going to work into the bottom. So you've got your lovely magic circle there that's going to be the top of our teapot so where we've just finished sewing up we're going to work back into row 10 so not where we've just finished i've sewn this so tightly i can barely see um but we're going to row come in one row in between rows 10 and 11. so you can see if i push my hook in it just brings up one post so we grab our yarn Shuffle your hook through one of the posts in between rows 10 and 11. So there's row where we sealed up was row 12. And there's 11 and 10. I'm just going to place our yarn over our hook and bring that through that post of that stitch. Then with our working yarn, just chain one. Cheat and pull on my tail yarn. And then we're going to work one single crochet around into each 
around each of these posts. You just yarn over, bring your loop back up and complete your single crochet. Move that tail out of the way because we can see where we've worked and there's the next hole we need to insert our hook into and we just need to find that post of that stitch that we're going to work around and then we just yarn over, bring that loop up, yarn over, pull through two. And we're going to do that the whole way around and we should have, if my yarn doesn't split, there we go. Has split. So insert the hook, pick up the post, yarn over and complete our stitch and we work around each post in this kind of in between these rows. Just insert the hook where you worked previously. working one single crochet around each post. I can't count, it's gonna be 12, sorry. Wrong stitch count. So we're gonna do that 12 times. <laughs> And it's kind of giving us another little row for us to work into so we can create the base of our teapot. Last one for me. And like we have done on all our previous rows, we're just going to slip stitch into that first stitch that we made to join the round. So that's the start of our base, like we're giving a crown to our teapot. So for the second part of this, so round two of the base, we're going to chain one and then in, uh, we're going to work one increase, one stitch and then one increase. So we're going to work one single crochet and then we're going to increase in the next stitch to so take our stitch count from 12 to 18. So into the next stitch we work two single crochets and into the next stitch it's one single crochet and then two and we do that the whole way around to increase our stitch count from 12 to 18. So at the end of this round we should finish on an increase. Did I just do an increase? I've lost count now. Yes, we did. Double. There we are. So two singles in that one. So we should finish as we have done on, or I have done on a double, so two increase. And again, to finish this off, we're simply, this is it, we're done with the base. We're just gonna slip stitch to join, little chain one, and then we can snip that yarn. Oops. The little chain one to secure, and pull on that to tighten. And there we have the base of our teapot. I think it's a really cute detail. So that bit's nice and quick and easy. I'm going to leave this tail particularly for a moment. So we're going to need that to help secure our spout, which is the next part to make. So we're going to start our spout. So making the spout is a little bit fiddly, but it's a really cute finish to this project. So we start by making a magic circle. However, you're used to doing that. I will include my tutorial in the description box below for you. You can, of course, just do a chain two if you'd like. I'm going to start by doing a little chain one, and we're simply going to work four single crochets into the centre of our magic circle. So 
And that is it for the beginning. That's row one of our spout. And then we can tighten our magic circle. And to join, you have to work out which one is your stitch. One, two, three, four. So this is why I'm not a huge fan of chain ones because now I have a loop, but that's fine. We can work with that. I'm going to slip stitch into that first stitch that we made somehow. There we go. Make sure I put my chain, my tail over that lump and slip stitch to join. So this is going to be really fiddly because for round two, we're going to work one single crochet into the same stitch as our chain one. And then we're going to increase one stitch, increase, and that's it. So it'll take us from four to six stitches. So insert your hook back into that stitch you just did your chain one. I might do this off camera because I can't see where I'm putting my hook with the light on. One second. So we insert the hook and we're going to place one single crochet into that first stitch. And then into the next stitch, we work two single crochets. One back into the same stitch for a second single crochet. And we work one single crochet into the third stitch around. And then we finish with two single crochets into that last stitch. This is the fiddliest bit, I think. It's worse than the sewing up, but it's worth it. So we need to slip stitch to the top of that first stitch which is all the way around there, even though we're there. So it's insert your hook under your top loops and then slip stitch to join. There we go. You can pop it out if you need to and then just chain one to secure. So for round three of our spout, we're going to start by working into the back loop only. So for this, if you can see on this stitch here where we've just slip stitched, the loop closest to us is our front loop and this loop here is our back loop. So we're just going to insert our hook under the back loop of the stitch we just slip stitched into. Encourage it through if you need to, there we go and just work one single crochet into each stitch around, working into that back loop only. And what this is going to allow us to do is to create the indent at the opening of our spout without having an opening. So we're going to do six single crochets in round three, all worked into the back loop only. I wasn't sure how many more I had to do. There's the last one. There we go. Oh, there's the last one. Goodness me, I can't even count. There we go. And as always, we are going to slip stitch through both loops of our first stitch that we made to join our round. If you need to, you can pop your spout the right side out so that your tail's on the inside just to make it a little bit easier when you're working. I promise you there's only three more rounds on this one. So all we have to do now is work one single crochet into each stitch around, working through both loops of the stitches. And we're going to do this for three rows. So this is rows four to six. So just six single crochets around. 
you can fold your work if you need to or make sure you've popped it out so it makes it easier for you to insert your hook just into the stitches. You're probably finding this easier than I am. <laughs> just six single crochets. That's round four. Oops, caught on the back of my lip. There we are. And then we just slip stitch to join. And we're going to do that twice more. Whoopsie. For a total of six rounds. So chain one. So I'm going to catch up with you at the end of row six. This is my row five. And then I'll show you how to attach your spout. So I've just finished my last round of my spout. Got a little chain one and I'm just going to snip that off and pull my hook through to secure that last stitch. Now you'll be quite excited to know that we do not need to stuff this spout because it is so tiny. What we're going to do is with your original tail yarn, if you just pull on that gently, it will cause your spout to have a lovely indent like all spouts do, ready to pour their tea. So as you can see, it just reduces the length and creates a lovely little spout. So how are we going to attach this spout, do you think? Unfortunately, we need to sew it on. So <laughs> what I would recommend is that your spout is placed between, what have we got? One, two, three. So from row three down, Oh no, sorry, row four down to row six. We're going to sew it on between there. If you have your tail, like I want to just, I'm going to shove mine on the inside with the back of my needle. Just going to shove the tail yarn in to act as stuffing without letting that, there we go. So just fill it a little bit so I don't need to use any real stuffing, making sure that the spout is still nice and flat. I'm just going to thread this on, the tail of my spout onto my needle, grab my little teapot and I'm going to work from rows four to six. So one, two, three, four. This is going to be the top of my spout. So if I just pop through the first stitch, so I'm left-handed when I sew, do apologise if that confuses anybody. I'm just going to kind of check that it looks okay, that I'm happy with where I'm placing it. Is it going to point up a little bit like a spout should? Let's hope so. To reshape that a little bit. So that's where my spout is going to be. It looks like a little character. So I'm going to turn it a little bit. There we go. That looks better. Just going to hold that on with my finger in place and working through this stitch here, I'm going to go back in and out through another stitch. just to secure it where I want it. Now that looks much better to me. I'm working round through the stitches that I've just worked into. I don't want to cinch this too tightly. I don't want to pull the bottom of the spout in any more than I have to. It doesn't have to be tightly pulled or anything like that. We're just attaching it loosely kind of to the, to the teapot. come through already. Making sure that it's still sitting right when the teapot's back into position. Then one final stitch. No, one more. You need to secure that end down there as well. One final stitch. <laughs> there we go. So if you're happy with the placement of your spout, And what I would recommend is that you go in near where you've sewn it on and push your needle all the way through to near where this tail is because we're going to secure it together with a little knot. So not where it's attached here on the pot, but just at the bottom here. I'm just going to lightly knot that because that will help pull the spout up a little bit as well. And when you're happy with that, make a second knot to secure 
and we're going to bury those ends in at the end. So now we have our base and our spout. We need our handle. I want to sing the song so badly. So I'll pop that there. Still looks like a creature, but it's all fine. So to make our handle, I'm using my contrasting colour again, just so it can stand out. And we're going to just pop a slip knot on our hook. And we start by making a chain of 10. And we very simply work into the second chain from hook. But what I would recommend to make this look really, really cute, we're going to work into the back bump of our chain rather than under the front. So you see at the back of your chain, you've got these lovely little lumps. So this is your first one. We're not going to work into that. We're going to start in the second bump from hook. Once you've got the first one done, the rest are a lot easier. So you just insert your hook. Sorry, if I pull away a little bit, it might be easier. There we go. So insert your hook through that first back bump and work a single crochet into each back bump down. So that'll give us a stitch count of nine single crochets. The reason I'm encouraging you to work into the back bump of your chain is that it gives the, it almost works kind of a bit like a foundation chain where but a little bit easier where on the other side of your chain you still have your stitches so you are almost creating an edge as you work your chain by working into these back bumps so it's, it's a good cheat in a good way there are so many ways to work into your chain to create different looks this is most definitely my favorite working into the back bump The one final bump to work into, always the trickiest, that and the first. Do you only want to pick up one bump? Oh, come on you. There we go. That's it, that's our handle done. So I'm going to do a little chain one and snip, leaving enough to sew on. And this is our handle, it's as simple as that. So the way in which we're going to position this is that I'm going to pop the bottom of the handle 50, you know, 180 degrees away from the spout and we're going to curl that top over and sew it on there and it just gives us our spout. I mean our handle, goodness me. There we go. So I'm just going to thread one side on, doesn't matter which side we're doing, we're going to make sure that we are pretty much opposite our spout and we're just going to pop our hook through. That will of course bring our handle up. I'm going to fold that edge down where the other chain is and I go back in, I should have done a contrasting colour shouldn't I? I'm going to go back in through the chain, I've just dropped the thread needle there we go I'm going to go back through this from the goodness me go through there we are back through that last stitch and backwards on myself again to kind of secure that first bit so many ends making sure that that is nice and snugly tight into the bottom of your teapot. Should have maybe left a slightly bigger thread. <laughs> oh dear, we all do it. So I'm going to go all the way up to where I want my handle to be attached inside the, there's about here, inside the teapot. I'm going to go all the way up so I've got my thread going in and under, but it'll be unseen. See? I'm going to get my handle, just fold it over and pop it near where where I want that to be. And you can see where you've got a little fold 
we want to go through the handle from the underside to the front and pull it through because we want the top to then go back through and into the next stitch. I'm just going to come out under one stitch underneath for the moment. Let's pull that taut because that creates the freestanding handle. Pull that a bit tauter. There we are. See, it makes it stand out. It's not overly big, but it does make it stand out nicely. Put the back on my hook. It's definitely too short, this thread. And very simply, I'm going to go back through the same hole so no one can see my thread all the way out the back and out the bottom of my teapot towards those other threads again. Pull that through. I want it to change the shape of the teapot. It's going to do that. And I am going to once again cheat by just securing this to one of these threads here, checking that my pot is not misshapen in any way. And then that's secure. So all that's left to do now is to bury our threads. Make sure they're all nice and tight. I'm just going to literally, the same way we did with the center of the teapot, I'm just going to work in and out of various stitches to bury these threads. So go back in the way we came in, back out somewhere else. Oops, preferably through a stitch. And then once you're happy that they're buried, you can just snip them and they should disappear with a bit of manipulation. There we go. Like they never existed. They're disappeared. Got one more to do from the bottom. This is lovely and short, this thread. <laughs> yeah. Be generous with yourselves, guys. Cut a little bit more off than you think you might need for sewing on and burying. So this is going to be a one-time job. There we go, straight through. And I'm just going to snip that one off. And it's gone. So then we have to do these final, final edges in the normal kind of way. Because this is on show. So we have to go along the stitches. I'm going to come back through this way to get that underneath. And then I'm just going to weave it in through these stitches underneath so that it's nice and secure and won't pop out. So to do that, I'm going to go backwards and forwards three ways. That's one. Oops. All these are tight. And I'm just going to, there we go, that's going through now. Two, there we are. No one's going to see that one, are they? going to snip that one as close as I can. And then for this final one, we do get to bury this one as well. We haven't sewn with it. It's not essential. So we can hide it in here. There we go. Ooh. All that pushing and pulling, we may need to reshape our teapot a bit. But the teapot itself, It's finished. All we need to do now is, of course, attach our chain and our ring pull. You're probably going to tell me off for this. But I'm very simply going to get my scissors and open up one ring. This one's already been opened, I think. There we go. And to make my life easier, I'm very simply going to work with one at a time. So we've got a little hole there and I'm going to just place it through one of the stitches. I might need to open that a little bit further. If you've got pliers, so much the better, but I don't because I don't really do jewellery. I do like to crochet pretty little things. So once you've got your hole wide enough, 
it's not that wide. We're just going to hook that through, ideally the middle of your project. to secure it safely. So once you've pushed it through, just maneuver it so that it's facing the right way. And then you can attach the rest of your chain. And then with your pliers or whatever you have to hand, in my case, you can just tighten that ring nice and securely so that the chain doesn't come off and that your beautiful finished project doesn't come off either. Still seeing this off camera, sorry. There we are. So now that's nice and secure. Re-squish your teapot once more. And then we just have to pop our ring pull. Not a ring pull, that's off of a can our key ring fastening on and we have a tiny teapot ready to gift to all those tea lovers out there. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you would like to see the written pattern you can find that over on my blog. I'll pop the link in the description box below and of course do share your finished teapots with me. You can find me over on Instagram or on Facebook too and I love to see your finished projects. So come and join us in the community group and you can join like-minded people too. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and of course hit the notification bell and the subscribe button so you never miss out on another one of my crochet tutorials again.